Hey, Phil Ebener here with Video School Online. This is a very informal response to a question that I frequently get in my Adobe Premiere Pro courses. People often are confused about what a sequence is and when do you use a sequence? Should you use multiple sequences? What do you use a sequence for? So that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So basically you think of a sequence as your video within your project. This is the video that you're working on. Your entire project can consist of multiple sequences and there's different ways people use sequences. I personally use a sequence as an individual video that I'm going to edit together and then I'm going to export. But you can imagine that a project might have multiple videos within it. For example, this is just a test project that I've set up, but I've imported screen records or video that I'm going to edit down from another course that we're working on for the Mavic drone. So here you can see, which kind of helps you understand what we're doing, that I had multiple video takes for specific lessons. So for lesson 2.1, we have three videos that we're going to put together. So the first question is, how do you create a sequence? Well, the easiest is just to drag your video clip into this new item button down here. And we've learned that if you've watched the Premiere Pro course, this matches the sequence settings with the video content itself. So you can see actually this video content is vertical iPhone footage from the app. So if we wanna edit it that way, that's perfectly fine. That matches the sequences. So someone asked me in a class, do you create a new sequence for every piece of media? No, you would not create a separate sequence for this second video. Because this is the same lesson or the same video we're going to be putting together, it's just another piece of media, we're going to add it to this sequence. So now I have two video clips on this sequence. And we have one more, which is this video right here, 2.14. And I'm going to add this to this sequence as well. So now I have this one sequence and it has multiple clips on it. And now this is what I think of as one video. I'm going to work through all of these video clips that we've added, edit it down, and that's going to be one lesson or one video. The next lesson that we're going to be working on, which is going to be a completely separate video that we export, is the second one, 2.2, video, photo video settings. So I would create a new sequence with this. Again, by just dragging this into the new item button. You can see this is a different type of sequence, so the settings are a little different. Now I'm not going over settings. I probably wouldn't actually edit it with these settings right here. This is a vertical video. I would edit it with horizontal settings, but I'll go over that in another lesson. I kind of talk about that in another lesson. But now you kind of understand that we have two sequences, and let me move them outside of this main folder because it's kind of confusing. So let me close down this bin. And here are our two sequences that we've created. One is for lesson number one in this section of the course. Then the second video is for this lesson number two. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If we have other media that we want to add to this lesson or this video, we can add that. So we can add photos, we can create graphics, we can add music. That's all stuff that we'll have to import into our project and then put into our sequence. But again, for the person who asked, do we create a new sequence for every piece of media? No, that wouldn't make sense because you would have vid video, you would have photos, you would have music that you've brought in, and you wanna add those to the one sequence. So that's one way to use sequences, by basically having a sequence for every piece of content. So that, so that's one way to have sequences, basically creating a sequence for every individual video that you're going to work on within this project. Another way that people use sequences, especially for longer term projects, is for versions of your video. So for example, a lot of people are just using Premiere Pro to edit one video for one project. You don't have multiple videos in, an, in a single project. So in that case, for example, let me just delete this second sequence that we created. So now all we have is this first sequence. And I'll call this, let's call this documentary 
rough cut. Now the way that you actually work through your project might be different, but one simple way you would do it is you would create a rough cut. So I would edit all my video, you know, make some changes, make some cuts, maybe delete this clip if it was bad or whatever, put our, our entire video together here. And then before actually moving on to the fine cut or the final cut where we're making more changes, what I might do is actually copy this and paste it. I'm just on a Mac, I'm just doing Command C and then Command V, then re rename it to Documentary Fine Cut. Usually for your cuts you go rough, fine, and then final, or there might even be some in between. But the fine cut is the next step. And the reason why we do that is because say we make some changes to this sequence. So we make some changes to the sequence. We edit out this clip. We do a bunch of stuff. We add music. We adjust sound. We adjust, you know, add effects, transitions. But we want to go back and see what the rough cut looks like. Now we have this rough cut saved. So this is the original version. You don't have to undo things or anything like that. You can just go back. And so we would make changes and then say we want to do another round of editing. We would copy and paste this sequence. Copy and paste it. Copy, paste. There we go. Rename, final cut. Or however many versions you want to do. Sometimes I don't do rough, fine, final. What I'll do is just documentary version one, version two, three, four, and then just go as many times as I create a new version. Some people create a new version every time they open up Premiere Pro to edit. Some people create a new version every time, every new day that they work on their project. Some people create new sequences and new versions every time they make some major changes and they know that they wanna be able to go back to the previous version. Or sometimes it's just if you have to actually show your cut to a client, for example, and so you have version one that you show and then they give you notes and then you make a version two so that if they say, oh, let's go back to how it was in version one, you have that available. So those are the two ways that most people use sequences within a project. The first is remember that within a project, you can create multiple videos. So you can actually add, you know, create multiple videos within this one project. For example, if you're creating a YouTube series, you might only have one Premiere Pro project. You don't necessarily have to create a brand new Premiere Pro project for every single new video. You might just add all of those tutorials and things or series you're creating to this one project, but you export out and you edit different videos from this one project. The second way to use sequences is for versioning. So if you start with a rough cut and then you work your way through the versions. And then I'll just mention one last way that people use sequences, and that's if you're creating a really long project, a narrative film or even a documentary that is longer than 10, 15 minutes that has multiple scenes. Some people like using different sequences for different scenes. So, you know, you take any movie and the opening scene is inside an office building. So you would edit that scene as one sequence. But then if you cut to the next scene, which is outside at someone's home or whatever it is, that next scene you would edit in a different sequence so that you have it all sort of split up, it's more organized that way. And then at the end, you can put it all together in one sequence, but when you're building out each scene, you work on them separately. And that can also help with the, it's not as much of a problem anymore, but with Premiere Pro, when you have these big long sequences that are hours long with lots and lots of clips, lots of edits, sometimes it, Premiere Pro can get a little buggy. And so it's good to actually separate those into smaller sequences. It's not as much a problem as it was a few years ago with the new versions of Premiere Pro. But anyways, I just wanted to mention that. And I just wanted to kind of walk through this process, my thoughts for using different sequences. I hope this was helpful for people who were confused. If this was the video you were looking for, please let me know in the comments of this video so I know that you know the right people are getting to this video. If this was not the video you were expecting, let me know and let me know what you were searching for or how you would better find this video um, because I wanna make sure that the title of this video and the description match what people's expectations are so you're finding it on YouTube or wherever you're watching it. 
Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in another lesson or video or over at videoschoolonline.com. Have a great day.